the high seas, high seas. Cast my line, now they're biting. Rocky coast and lighthouses, what she knows now I doubt it. Talk to me nice. I think your confusion starts with street lights. Hi Taurus and welcome to your March 2019 reading. All right, guys. So before I start the reading, there is a few things I want to talk about as far as astrology. Those of you who have been around for a while know that I start my readings out with that information. For those of you who are uninterested in that information, please just fast forward a few minutes. Um, but I do think this information is, an, is important, Taurus. There is a lot of important stuff going on for the month of March for you guys astrologically. So, the sun is in Pisces in March, but it will be going into Aries towards the end of March. So, what we have happening there is energy in your 11th house and energy in your 12th house. Pisces is a very collective energy for you, Taurus. It's 11 houses away from you. So, it does represent your friends. It does represent groups of people in your community, even your social status to a certain extent even your wishes and your dreams. So Pisces is bringing in all these energies. It's basically everything you're going through, you can pretty much just times it by 11. So that is kind of intense to have Pisces. If you guys have any Pisces friends this month, they'd probably be really good to hang around. But the energy does seem a bit collective and maybe even a bit chaotic um, in March, Taurus. But the sun is moving into your 12th house at the end of the month, and that's going to bring a lot of energy into your subconscious, into your, your spirituality. You guys can expect a significant increase in your dreams towards the end of the month with that Aries energy. Aries is the sign right behind you guys, so things are getting pretty close to Taurus. Um, everything's going to start moving into your sign. Some things have already moved into your sign. But Aries is going to end a cycle for you so that you guys can bring in your birthday in April. So next month is going to be happy birthday, Taurus. So that 12th house energy is going to really be ending a cycle, okay? A lot of subconscious energy there. We did have a new moon in Pisces, so that was setting new intention collectively for yourself. Um, setting new intentions for certain friends to connect with certain... This is your soul tribe, you know, connecting with certain members of your soul family. That was more the, the beginning of March. And there is going to be a full moon in Libra, and I will have a video for that, Taurus, towards the end of the month if you want to check that out, okay? But what I really want to talk to you guys about is Uranus, okay? Uranus has shifted into Taurus. It's at zero degrees Taurus. It's going to start moving soon. Um, this is going to bring, it's a completely different vibe, Uranus and Taurus. You know, I'm sure if any of you guys are keeping an eye on astrology, lots of people are talking about Uranus and Taurus, Uranus and Taurus. This is a seven-year transit. For the last seven years, Uranus has been in Aries, and that was one shift. But uh, it did it did go into Taurus a bit in 2018, I think around May. I'm not sure. But then it retrograded back into Aries, and now it's finally moving forward forever into Taurus. <clears throat> I do not think that it's going to retrograde back into Aries, um, but I'm not sure. This is just something to research and prepare for, you guys, because Uranus is a very shocking electric energy. It brings things like unstabi unstability. It brings surprises to you, good and bad. Um, it's just going to be an element of surprise and shock in a completely different area of all our lives. But since you are Taurus, you know, and since Uranus is moving into your sign, I wanted to take some time to talk to you about that specifically. Although, this is something to talk to everyone about. So, I'm going to try my best to come out with a... Um, a Uranus and Taurus series so that I can take a deeper look at where these shocks and surprises are going to come into for all of us but for you Taurus this is going to be something that has to do directly with you you may be feeling directly unstable you know you may have felt that Uranus shift on March 6th around that new moon in Pisces that was when um, Uranus also moved into Taurus now Mercury is also retrograde I do want to mention that, so a lot of the instability is, is going to be felt with that. Um, even f This is like huge for friends coming back from the past. If any of you guys have friendships or even lovers coming back from the past, um, Mercury retrograde in the 11th house, it can take you back to certain communities from the past, certain jobs. It's just a very reflecting energy. It can fuck up stuff, so be careful ordering stuff online um, during this time, okay? 
Uh, what else? Taurus, Mars is in your sign right now. That's going to be one of the last things I talk about so we can get going with this reading. But Mars is in your sign, Taurus. If you've been feeling any aggression or warlike energies, um, if, if you're attracting this in other people. But on the bright side, Mars can definitely give Taurus energy. It can give you drive and, and it can compel you to action. So Mars will be entering Gemini towards the end of the month. So um, if I were you, Taurus, I would use this Mars transit to my, my advantage. But with Mars and Taurus, it is about moving a bit slower. Taurus is about taking practical action, not just charging into random shit that can throw us off our stability. Stability is very important for you, Taurus. So this Mars transit has been telling all of us, it's been showing us and influencing all of us to move in a more stable way, even if it's moving slower. You know, slow and steady wins the race type of thing. So I just wanted to mention a few of those planets there. I think that's, you know, there's always a lot more going on. But for those of you who want to know more, you can always reach out to me. Um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with this reading. So I've already pulled some cards, Taurus, just to save a bit of time. I'm using the Iris Oracle deck this month. If you guys want to know more about these cards, look in the description. I really suggest um, looking into these. And then I'm going to clarify so the last thing I want to mention here is this whole St. Patrick's thing. Okay, you guys can see there's a lot of green. You know, I don't I don't like celebrating the holidays. I think it's all for money and it's just a huge scam. But I have also been enlightened over the years. Over the past few years, I've realized the significance of these holidays. So last month, I made I made everything red and I had all these hearts for Valentine's Day because I was honoring the portal of love. We have all these portals. Holidays are mass rituals, and they're, they're times of the year where the energy surges, like everyone all around is doing the same thing, relatively. So this month, we have St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to those of you who celebrate, all the Irish descendants and all that. But to me, this is honoring luck and fortune this month, okay? There is a portal of luck opening up this month, and I wanted to honor that. So, you know, I just wanted to put that in there a little bit for those of you guys who are celebrating the holiday. A little bit of a deeper meaning there. But let's get into this reading, Taurus. Let's see what's going on for you guys. I'm going to lower this now just so that you guys can see all the cards coming out here, okay? So let's go ahead and start revealing some of these. And we're also going to be reading from the book, which has been helping me a lot with the, the meanings and learning the, the meanings of these cards. Because they are new. I got them for Christmas, but I haven't really used them a lot, okay? So let's talk about this first energy coming up. Taurus, I like this for you. We have the card, what is hidden will be revealed. What is hidden will be revealed. This could be that 12th house energy, that hidden energy. Some of you guys are just, you know, you, you might have an intuition about something. This is starting the month off. Something is hidden from you, Taurus, but it will be revealed. And one of the main things I'm picking up on intuitively from this card is how much it resembles your Hierophant card. I don't have the Hierophant card present right now, but if I happen to see it in this reading, I'll, I'll make sure to show you the cards together. The Hierophant card also has these the two keys right here, okay? So I did notice right here these two keys and how also your ruling card, the Hierophant. Taurus is the Hierophant card in tarot. So yeah, this is definitely resembling that. The two keys are really calling me. There might be, you know, some kind of hidden, something that you have to unlock okay in order to see all right there's this keyhole here that might be relevant but these two keys here that's like two decisions two different um you know paths or something like that maybe even a choice to reveal something maybe you're hiding something taurus and you're deciding when to reveal it but we're going to go ahead and just read from from the book on this one and see what's going on here so we have the page 54 and i did just open right up to that page so when i do that i know that that there's really a synchronicity here and that this card was absolutely meant for you. 54, you know, this is May 4th, okay? Some of you guys may be born on May 4th. I, I believe that was that would be Taurus season, May 4th. Um, we also have April, let's see, March, April, May, June. So June 5th and May 4th, if that matters. Or maybe the number 54 is just relevant for some of you guys, I'm not sure. So let's go ahead and read here and see what's going on here. It says... Recently, it may have felt like you were in a pitch black room and that you couldn't find the light switch. Decision, decisions that needed to be made have been more difficult trying to see where you fit in relationships, what, what the next move is, and if you can hold off making any big decision, decisions just a bit longer, take time to recenter and find a peace of mind. 
Things will become much more clear soon. You will soon be handed the key to your recent mysteries. Okay, so there's some kind of key being handed to Taurus. Um, something is absolutely going to be revealed when the time is right. Maybe when there's a Libra full, full moon at the end of the month. Um, but that whole dark room energy coming up, you know, it talked about feeling like you're in a dark room and you can't find the light switch. I think you guys are going to be feeling that. Um, I think you guys have just been feeling that in March in general. Pisces can be a bit of a dark time. You know, it can be a bit confusing. There's a lot of illusions coming up here with Neptune and lots of energy in your 11th house. And that's very collective, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video. But Taurus, don't worry. You know, the sun is getting closer and closer to you. It, it needs to get its darkest before it can get its lightest, okay? So these energies are closing up. Pisces is headed into Aries. It's going to... It's going to bring a light. The sun is going to be in your 12th house of subconscious, bringing a lot of clarity to your emotions, a lot of spiritual clarity and awareness and enlightenment. And also Uranus is the planet of enlightenment. So there's a lot of energies just enlightening you to things right now, Taurus, which is ultimately going to give you these keys here to unlock something. So I'm going to let you guys kind of figure out what that means for you individually. Before I clarify this card, I do want to show you the pre-shuffle. I shuffled the cards with your energy before I hit record. And what I got here is the Three of Swords, similar to Pisces. There could be some kind of Pisces energy relevant, because so far, Pisces and Taurus have received a very strong Three of Swords energy. You know, some of you guys may be going through separation this month, or heartache, maybe some deception, betrayal. Um, there could be some kind of breakup or divorce or something relevant here, or maybe you're just needing to communicate something at a heart level. This is like a mind, a mind over heart matter. To me, these three swords stab into this heart symbolize needing to speak your truth at a heart level. You could just be speaking from the heart. And if you're dealing with heartbreak or third parties, if, if you found out about a third party or if there's something like that going on, the three of swords could represent that. And, you know, that's definitely a situation that needs heart-to-heart -heart conversations behind the three of swords we have the eight of pentacles so some of you guys are still trying to work through this taurus virgo capricorn energy here gemini libra aquarius maybe it's a heartbreaking work situation maybe there's someone who works at a distance or something like that lots of pentacle energy here taurus so this oh goodness yeah three pentacle cards behind this three of swords in the judgment so this is about um you know teamwork you know, somebody working together about something that happened in the past, and again, some kind of decision or juggling more than one person, more than one job, more than one thing that you value. There's these two things that you value here that you're trying to juggle, and it has to do with maybe some kind of awakening, maybe some kind of um, second chance at a job. There is a job from the past coming up here, um, but, you know, it's very important here to maintain balance. Maybe you're dealing with a Libra with an earth sign energy. Maybe there's an earth sign here with Libra energy. But this is about, you know, only giving out what you receive. So not giving more than what you receive, Taurus. Not taking more than what you receive. This is going to be a very important energy for you this month with Uranus, you know, making Taurus feel unstable a bit. Maybe it's not, maybe you're not feeling Uranus so much right now, but the next, you are definitely going to feel it over the next seven years at some point, Okay. And Uranus and Taurus is making all of us think about money differently. Taurus, you do rule money. Even though you're going through 11th and 12th house energy this month, money is always something important to you. Stability, resources, values. That's what these pinnacles represent. Okay, that's what you're working on. Working really hard to perfect some kind of skill. This is someone who's working through a heartbreak. Because, you know, you're obviously dealing with some kind of heartbreak here, Taurus, in March. But you're still going to work. I'm hearing that one song, woke up late today and I still felt the sting of the pain, but I brushed my teeth anyway, got dressed to the mess and put a smile on my, so I get a little bit stronger, that's coming up here, riding in the car to work and I'm trying to ignore the hurt, yeah, okay, so this is, this is how an earth sign handles pain and betrayal you know what i mean maybe it's happening um financially or with an earth sign but to me this is someone who's still trying to put in their effort in a heartbreaking situation maybe that's just going to work after a heartbreak or something or working on something with a broken heart working on something with somebody where there was betrayal once before but that's the pre-shuffle taurus um lots of different ways that can can be manifesting for you Let's go ahead and clarify this card. What is hidden will be revealed. Why is 
What is hidden will be revealed here for Taurus for March 2019. What is hidden will be revealed. What is hidden will be revealed. What is hidden will be revealed. Okay, that makes sense. So the card coming out for that, Taurus, is this Two of Swords. Okay, this Two of Swords. And it's interesting. What is hidden will be revealed. Well, we've got this blindfold on this woman. So there's definitely something here that's being hidden. Now, I'm happy to say... At least I'm, I think I'm happy to say that you're actually hiding it from yourself, Taurus. To me, it just feels better to hide something from yourself than, to, than for something to be hiding from you. Although some of you could be dealing with a combination of both. It's going to depend. I only say that because I, I don't know. It just feels more of like a, a control thing. But it can also be worse sometimes to hide things from yourself because only you can reveal them to yourself. But it's interesting, you know, we have those two keys here, we have these two swords, so this is absolutely about some kind of decision that you're trying to make or avoid. The two of swords to me is someone who's thinking about their next move. So this is actually like avoiding making a decision because you're not sure if you have all the information yet, you're trying to blind yourself to what you think and feel so that you can kind of intuitively make this decision. There's something here about I need to make the right choice. It could be love, it could be home, it could be work, it could be any de decision. It's probably different for all of you. But we do have your mind coming up here with this air energy, and we do have Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. But to me, this card, when I read it, it did talk about, you know, decisions may be extra difficult. That's what I'm hearing the most, that there's certain decisions, um, you know, these are two different truths that, that may be contradicting each other. It's some kind of block or stagnance, maybe a stalemate. But it, it, there, there's something about this crossroads, this decision, these two different truths that um, will be revealed to you. That blindfold is going to come off. You're not going to be in a dark room for much longer. Okay, so, you know, that that's making a lot of sense to me. We may go back to that message if need be. I do feel like it's linked to the new moon in Aries. There's going to be a lot of darkness in that 12th house of yours. The new moon in Aries in April, you know, this is going to be some dark times. Maybe even the new moon in Pisces this month is relevant. You know, when it comes to making decisions like that in a very collective space, you know, you can feel like the wrong decision, even though I don't feel like there's right or wrong, there's only experience. And when you're just, when you're just considering experience, it really doesn't matter, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter which way you go if you if you don't really care where you're going. But I, I, not to say that you don't. That That's something that comes up in Alice in Wonderland. When she wants to know what way to go, she asks the Cheshire Cat. And he says, you know, he says, well, where are you trying to get to? And she's like, well, it really doesn't matter. And he's like, well, it really doesn't matter which way you go. So that's coming up there a little bit too. You know, the blind leading the blind kind of thing. And obviously some kind of decision. You know, these two different keys and these two different swords. And so far in the reading, the, the bottom of the deck is the Ten of Swords. Heavy sword energy. Lots of mental space energy coming up here, maybe with Mercury retrograde. Um, I do believe this card talked about holding off a little bit more until you make a decision. I feel Mercury retrograde has really put... You know, Mercury retrograde, it, it slows things down. It makes people second-guess stuff because our mind is taken back into the past... And, you know, all of a sudden, there's things from the past that are affecting our present. And so this card did talk about, you know, waiting a little bit longer to make a decision. My advice would be wait until April, um, maybe the second week of April, when this Mercury is direct again. Mercury is going to go back direct on the 28th of March. You want to hold off on any major decisions until then. You never want to embrace too much of heavy decisions in, in a Mercury retrograde because those decisions are not... You know, they're not fully impacted yet. It's kind of hard to explain, but there is something here about, you know, just kind of reevaluating your truth. Okay? So it is linked to some kind of pain, though. We have the Ten of Swords here. All right? So maybe this is a decision to end something. Maybe it's something that's related to pain. You know, it's interesting. It talked about being in a, in a dark space and not being able to see the light because the Ten of Swords always talks about some kind of light that's coming in. Okay? We've got the, the light at the end of the tunnel. There's some light coming in there, Taurus. All right? This is the ending to something painful. Even though you're still, you still feel like some of that emotion is there, you still feel like some of, some of those obstacles are still present, you still can't see very well. But the closer and closer we get to Taurus season, the closer we get to spring energy and 
the sun, you know, moving into Aries and Taurus, you're going to you're going to start seeing that light switch. Remember, what's hidden will be revealed, and when that thing is revealed, you'll have a decision to make basically. Could have something to do with the Lib a Libra or the Libra full moon. We do have Libra. If it's not Libra, maybe it has to do with the law or some kind of court system. Something that needs to be balanced out after a very painful ending. All right. So, so far we, we have something ending here. Some kind of painful decision here. What 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 is hidden will be revealed. I definitely see a very dark space with light coming in. So you're gaining clarity about these hidden things, Taurus. Let's go ahead and move on here to the next card. We have the twin card, one of my favorite cards in this deck. What number was that? 54. Now we have the card 57 coming up. 57. So again, May 7th. We had May 4th and May 7th coming up. Taurus energies. Some of you guys are, are born on those birthdays, okay? Now the twin card is really, really powerful and intense, okay? This is one of the more power the more intense cards. All right, we've got some kind of twin flame energy going on here. Some of you may be a twin. I mean, I am hearing that. Some of you guys may have twins. Some of you guys um, are twins. But this is also the twin flame stuff, the soulmate energy. So let's find out what's going on for twin and why it came here for you, Taurus. Pretty long message here, but I promise you won't regret hearing it. Some of you absolutely need to hear this. So it says, there are many souls on this earth whom you have met in past lives. Some may call them soulmates, people who you have relationships with again and again and again and again. The term soulmates has this super heteronormative, heteronormative co coordination of your one and only monogamous partner who is with you together forever and ever. Your spirit does not adhere to gender structures. You could have been any number of people in a past life. Your best friend today could have been your brother, wife, neighbor, or daughter in a, la in a life before. I like to consider them twins. Twins because they hold a mirror up to your spirit where you can get a glimpse of your past in the waking day through your love for another. These are not just romantic partners, but all kinds of people or even animals. Like twins, they are not the same, but they carry a sacred similarity. The, this card is a reference to a twin in your life or one you are about to meet. So I'm really interested in clarifying that, Taurus, because this looks like some kind of some kind of mirror situation going on. Okay, everything that you just heard is relevant for this twin. You guys, some of you guys are in on twin flame journeys. If you guys have been suspecting that or thinking that, it's definitely something coming in here. Um, in March. So let's go ahead and clarify this for you. Why is the twin card here for Taurus? Ooh. So we almost had the chariot card come out telling me that if there is a cancer now the card came out and it flipped back. So I'm not gonna take it. But when that happens, it's just for a little small number of you. So it's either a cancer energy, sun, moon, or rising, or it's about moving forward with this twin flame in spite of obstacles. Some of you guys are dealing with fire signs. Aries, Sagittarius, Leo, or maybe it's just a younger, passionate person. There is a younger person here, and it's with the Ace of Cups, okay? New love. I just stopped shuffling on this message here. So some of you guys are dealing with love coming in from the past with fire signs. It doesn't have to be a fire sign. The Page of Wands is in control of expressing yourself emotionally. This is representing a passionate message to or from you, Taurus. It's with, this is a beautiful message here in my hand. And it has something to do with the past because this is the Six of Cups. Could be um, a new child for some of you guys. But for me, this is like, this is someone returning from the past. Something nostalgic, that Mercury retrograde, bringing people back from the past. You may feel emotion from the past. Um, others of you are absolutely dealing with soulmates and twin flames. Now, remember, there's a, there's a, it's really hard to explain the differences between soulmates soulmates this is what i'm going to say because soulmate and you guys are on that soulmate twin flame journey some of you are going to know what i mean by that but some of us have signed up for journeys to where we have these karmic partners we go to soulmates we have twin flames and you know we're with different people at different times in order to accomplish a divine feminine slash divine masculine relationship now there are two women in this card so i am going to say that some of you guys are you know same sex couples watching and i do not judge 
gender is not a thing here. It even said that in the card. So I do see two women, but it could also be two men or a woman and a man, whatever. But uh, yeah, soulmates are people you were close with in a past life. Now, a twin, because some of you are really trying to figure out who's my soulmate, who's my twin flame. You know, maybe some of you guys aren't sure of the difference. Well, to me, the best way to understand it is soulmates are people you were close with in a past life, whether they were friends or mothers or fam family, whatever. Twins are is someone you were created with. Now, twin flames are not all they're chopped up to be, guys. This is extreme mirroring. This person is going to be very opposite of you, but very, very sacredly sim similar. It says there's a sacred similarity between these two people. But they're also meant to be opposites in certain ways. So they're going to show you certain stuff about yourself that you probably don't want to see. You know, there could even be certain trauma involved. Not for all of you, but sometimes twins are sent to you so that you can see a part of yourself through the love you have for them. So, Because they're the only person who can hold that mirror up. There's something that this person has to remind you of before you move on. We're not always meant to be with our twins in a romantic way. It sometimes can be a friendship or it's just about lessons. It, it's really going to depend. But I just wanted to say that there that some of you are definitely dealing with soulmates and twin flames, which is huge. Because they usually don't show up in the same lifetime together. And if they do, you are really um, dealing with some cycles and some less, some hardcore lessons. Why is the twin card here for Taurus? Why is the twin card here for Taurus? Wow. Ace of Cups. Ace of Cups coming out on the twin card. So there's a new love coming in in March, Taurus. And you know, I, I know certain Tauruses. I have them on my Facebook and I know that there are some Tauruses out there who have already found new love in March. Okay? So this is absolutely resonating with some of the Taurus energies that I know. This is a new love, but it's not going to feel new. You know, this is going to, that's why the Six of Cups showed up. Because it's going to feel very familiar. You know, you're going to be able to look at this person and you just feel a certain side of yourself with them. Like, it's beautiful. I don't know if this has something to do with a decision or something. But Ace of Cups, bottom of the deck so far, guys, right now for this reading is the the Queen of Wands. So it could be a Leo female. Um, there, It could just be very passionate. The Queen of Wands is very, very, very passionate. This could be you, Taurus. After you find this new love, you could just feel like the Queen of Wands. You know, this could be an Aries, a Leo, a Sag. You could have that energy in you. Um, but it is going to make you feel very passionate and inspired. It's going to make you feel manifested. It, like, this is a very fiery energy. Okay? This is going to make you feel like you're in control of your own passion with this with this person. Could be a Scorpio. We have your opposite sign, Scorpio. Now, if it's not a Scorpio, then this is just something that is a sudden beginning and a sudden ending. Okay? A transformation. A rebirth. This is going to change everything for you. It's going to completely transform your inner fire. The whole, the whole, It's going to change the whole way you see yourself. You're going to see yourself as way more attractive. Okay. Um, there is some kind of new spark here. And I am feeling, oh my god, fire sign energy for some of you for sure. If you're dealing with a Scorpio, there's a lot of passion. Um, and that's because Scorpio and Taurus are, are super opposite. So if you're dealing with a Scorpio, that is quite amazing. There's definitely a twin flame soulmate energy that comes up with all the opposite signs Taurus and Scorpio and Scorpio is showing up here there could be a new spark with a Scorpio or just a new spark that transforms something passionately but this new spark is absolutely from the past you guys maybe there's children involved maybe this person walked away before and is coming back okay but this is definitely um a soulmate spark, okay? A, a very familiar, nostalgic spark of passion. A new beginning creatively, but it is, it's a decision. After feeling stuck and stagnant, just like this two of swords, stuck and stagnant decision. This is another indication of a stuck and stagnant decision. After just hanging around and, and trying to see things differently, you're going to be put at a crossroads here between your future in your past this is a portal and this is a, absolutely a choice between between comfort and growth it could be a person you're comfortable with now versus this new person coming in that that's going to make you grow so you're looking out to your future with this decision lots of decision making here taurus i'm even seeing the seven of swords here you know so you know you guys might be taking everything you might be taking everything and kind of bouncing 
okay? Because it's the Ace of Pentacles with the Seven of Swords. This new, this new beginning is going to send... I don't see the Seven of Swords as cheating or anything. It could be a hidden agenda. But this is just an offer that Taurus accepts no matter how people feel about it. Other people might feel like, oh, you cheated, you stole, you know, you left without saying anything. Well, this spark came back from the past and it transformed everything at this at this point in the reading this is really some fire energy maybe fire maybe it's a scorpio with fire energy maybe it's a fire sign with scorpio energy but i'm seeing leo i'm seeing scorpio um ace of cups could be pisces cancer or scorpio but guys it really doesn't matter what sign it is especially when you're dealing with a twin flame connection um, because anyone can be your twin. It could be another Taurus. It could be any of the Zodiac signs. Either way, it's going to be a, a very new feeling that you haven't felt in a while because it's your twin. Some of you are dealing with soulmates too. New emotion. This person, you, this new love. Oh God, this new love. You know, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely new emotion that you've that you've avo you've avoided seeing it for a while and you're tired of it you know what's hidden will be revealed for some of you that's absolutely a hidden love that is going to reveal their self in march okay so let's move on here even though that is so beautiful this is like a beautiful part of your reading the next card we have is the heart eater interesting i know a little bit about this card it's one of the more interesting cards now we have the number 13 so march 13th can be important all right, so let's talk about this heart eater and understand what's going on here. So this card says, yikes, I know we can't be too excited about running into this character, but is it possible that this heart eater is misunderstood? She is not here to eat your heart. She eats her own. In a fit, she knows not what she does. She gets in such a state of uncomfortable feelings and confusion that she destroys her own heart. Let's take a moment to learn a lesson from her. She was so overwhelmed by her feelings of anxiety, discomfort, loneliness, and undirected energy that she turned her rage on herself. Let us all be nice to ourselves and our hearts when we are feeling like our emotions are caving in on us. Our hearts are powerful and can send their healing energy through our body, including our mind. Talk to your heart today out loud or inside your own mind and say three nice things to it. So Taurus, uh, go ahead and comment below if you want three nice things about your own heart. I really would do that if I were you, Taurus, because the heart eater is a card that comes up for people who are destroying their own heart because of uncomfortable feelings, confusion, that's Pisces season, okay, feelings of anxiety, discomfort, loneliness, undirected energy, and it talked about, where did it say, it says, Hmm, I just felt like it talked about Mars energy a little bit because it said, yeah, she turned her rage on herself. Mars is is connected to rage and Mars is in, in Taurus this month for a bit, okay, until it moves into Gemini, your second house. So could it be that there could be some rage, whether it's in the past or not, but with this new love coming up, Taurus, it's like you want to be very careful not to destroy your own heart because there's someone coming in that wants to reflect and mirror you. They want to be the yin to your yang type of thing. Um, it also talked about, hmm, let's see here, confusion. Yeah, this two of swords. So I know that there is some energy here that's confusing you in March. There's a lot of anxiety and emotions caving in um but this is very powerful and there's some healing energy just like this this is healing energy could be a new kid or something like that there, there could be a new child here that could be a twin flame too like i said it doesn't always have to be romantic but with that ace of cups it does look romantic so very powerful it can heal you it could heal your whole body including your mind so talk to your heart heart taurus i'm gonna be very proud of those of you who comment three things below nice nice things about your heart Okay, so the heart eater is coming up here. Let's go ahead and clarify that and see what's going on and why Taurus is eating their heart out. Because that's what I just heard is Barbie, eat your heart out type of thing. We have the queen of pentacles. This is a Taurus female. So this is definitely telling me that Taurus is eating their own heart. Could it be that there is a Gemini link to the situation? Could it be that there was hastiness or some kind of quick decision? Because the Knight of Swords is very different than the Two of Swords. The Knight of Swords would never be able to embody the Two of Swords because the Knight of Swords makes very quick decisions before thinking them through, before thinking about the consequences. 
this also has something to do with family and home okay you guys have been focusing a lot on you know this is you Taurus Tauruses focus a lot on the stability of their home this is a someone who cooks and cleans and does the laundry and this is that nurturing earth mother this is the mother of earth and it is a Taurus woman that's why there's a bull there on the chair Taurus woman it could also be a Capricorn or a Virgo if that matters but this is my Taurus woman card okay um, and it's right on the heart eater and the heart eater, eater talks about someone who's eating their own heart I try to validate that card and I get the Taurus energy so Taurus in what way are you destroying your own heart is it by focusing more on stability than you are you know because there is a such thing as relationship stability too okay emotional stability not just physical coin related tangible materialistic stability Taurus I know that you guys are extremely focused on you know uh, finances and value and possessions because that's what you represent in astrology but it's really interesting I'm a Taurus moon okay so what I've learned about stability and, and value is more about the is it's more on the emotional aspect but I'm also feeling that Uranus entering Taurus has made you guys even more focused on the stability of your home over the next seven years you know the money the finances the rent little stuff happening in, around the home um, but because of this energy this earth energy you know you could have just turned a little cold on yourself you guys might be letting that financial anxiety or anxiety in the home you could be letting that um, destroy your own heart because there is a very quick decision that someone wanted to make here in regards to their stability like you are wanting to charge full force at least mentally you know you're wanting to charge full force to this ten of Pentacles we've got air signs and earth signs showing up so there could definitely be a Gemini this is Gemini but it could be Libra and Aquarius too or this could just be you really wanting to char charge forward towards stability especially by Gemini season or maybe there's a Gemini relevant but this looks like a quick decision that you made in regards to stability instead of emotion but see with Pisces season it really did stir up a lot of those waters back there and even though you're blinded and there's something that hasn't been revealed yet we all learned in Pisces season what we felt I'm sure we all cried at least once this month in Pisces season now this has to do with the home environment for sure because we have the four of wands okay the four of wands is a celebration it's a foundation a home a marriage a proposal some kind of party going on st. Patrick's Day party maybe it's a celebration maybe an anniversary coming up some kind of wedding here is, is relevant and with this card here this is about a home environment for sure you know one where there's lots of it looks like a kind of a crowded home environment because there's two dogs and there's like this old guy standing someone who's elderly is here there's like these two people here but there's also this child here and these two dogs so it can get a little chaotic in the home Taurus uh, especially if you guys are going through like you know are we gonna have enough money for this wedding like this is like finances and weddings and you know taking the relationship to the next level but this looks like a pretty hasty decision about that whatever that might mean Taurus like someone's just trying to charge into the stability of this relationship or this commitment or this home environment it could be all and it's gonna mean different things because the next card out would be the Empress which is Venus and Venus is moving into Pisces it's in Aquarius right now it's gonna move into your 11th house it's in your 10th house right now so you know money and love your career it's interesting this is literally a very good energy to talk about when it comes to Venus because love and career the next 10 years like Taurus is very much focused on the next 10 some of you are focused on the next 10 years of your relationship like I want to be married in the next 10 years I want to at least be moving some of you guys want pregnancy this is a pregnant woman coming up here after the the four of wands some of you may live with your mother okay there might be a mother figure here involved or some kind of person that's pregnant living with you or you know you guys are really having your mind set on this, the stability of your family that you're trying to create some of you already have a family maybe there's some grandmother energy coming up here like some of your children are having kids this this or finding out they're pregnant this is a significant Taurus Libra and Aries so it depends but this is a mother whether you're a mother or your your actual mother's coming up here but we have this with um so marriage and pregnancy moving in together stability you're charging forward towards all that Taurus okay and we do have the tower here okay there's a message here linked to moving forward or some kind of obstacle 
all right but we'll let this message come out if it's relevant but i do want to say taurus moving forward after something crumbles down with some kind of pregnancy marriage something here but at this point in the reading we do have the knight of swords okay so it's about making a hasty decision after taking a long time to think about which way to go remember those two keys okay unlocking something waiting a little bit to make a decision if you can um but something's gonna get revealed to you maybe about love maybe about family or something like that and you're gonna probably really want to make a, a very quick decision um you're going to charge forward to stability. And some of the stability is like moving a home. Moving. Okay. And, and you know, the tower is just something that shocks you. You just didn't see this coming. This message. You didn't see this coming. You know, you guys are trying to move forward even though you're not exactly sure, uh, you know, what this is going to do to you emotionally. So let's continue here. The next card we have is make it look like the night. We did have this for Aries. Maybe March 3rd was important. Or, I'm sorry, March 5th, maybe June 3rd is important. Make it look like the night, Taurus. This coming up underneath what is hidden will be revealed is, is quite interesting. And we do have the card 53 and 54, okay? These cards are extremely going together in your reading, all right? They go right together in the book, too. So this card and this card is related what is hidden will be revealed and until then taurus make it look like the night okay whatever that means to you maybe it's being a little bit more seclusive being a little bit more silent about certain stuff this this card is talking about priestess energy okay so priestess of the night when those who have vision in the darkness come out to celebrate the time of the moon night is our necessary balance do not fear seeing what is unseen and do not be afraid of what you see and how it makes others feel do we put less value on what that which is not sunshiny and bright we put a veil between the sun and the moon between the darkness and the light the night is just as much of the truth as the sun you can use your all-knowing to bring your knowledge of ultimate balance and the value of the unseen to those who only live in the daylight the priestess of night shows us that darkness is to help us achieve temperance so ooh, temperance is bringing up sagittarius but it's also bringing up balance so this is talking about not being afraid of what you see towards after it's revealed to you okay this blindfold is going to be coming off at, towards the end of march and you're going to be eyes wide open okay you're going to be able to see from a star-like perspective okay don't be afraid of what you see don't be afraid of what's revealed to you by the end of march okay don't be afraid of how it makes other people feel especially when it comes to a decision this month you know you, you guys are making a decision in the dark because you're going to gain your own intuitive clarity now i'm seeing this new moon energy you can see that new moon up there right that same moon is on this person's head and it kind of looks bull like doesn't it it kind of looks like the horns of a bull so this is definitely taurus and this is definitely talking about the new moon in pisces and the new moon in aries next month so from March 6th to April 6th, there's something going on there that's being revealed to you, something you're going to see in the darkness. It is going to be, it's going to seem a little bit like a dark time, Taurus, Aries season, because that's your 12th house. So, you know, trust me, when I went through 12th house energy uh, last month with Aquarius, lots of dreams. I didn't sleep very well. I was very conflicted mentally. So this is about, you know, no wonder you're slowing down and not making a decision quite yet. Because you're really not sure which way to go, you know, like you can't see that light because it's a new moon period. So maybe something here about the Libra full moon. You know, it's interesting. We've got you charging forward here. So, you know, you're, you're wanting to do that, but it's maybe causing you a little bit of fear a little bit because you're like, I don't know. I don't know these parts. You know, I mean, this is very unfamiliar to me, but make it look like the night, Taurus. Use this dark time. Use this airy season to clear your subconscious entirely. Because I'm telling you, there is something here. Now, this is talking about valuing the darkness and allowing it to balance you. Because you're going through dark, the dark night of the soul, so that in a, in a month, the light can come into you. You're definitely going to know certain stu stuff by Taurus season for sure. So let's clarify. Why is make it look like the night here for Taurus? The king of wands, okay? With, wow, the queen of wands at the bottom, so here's that twin energy guys these are two people who are passionately connected 
they're very attracted to each other you know fire sign energy for sure aries leo sagittarius but we've got the divine masculine with an underlying energy of the divine feminine which is that twin card absolutely a relationship now the queen of wands and the king of wands they're they're in a very it's very important that they express themselves together that they create together and lead in a passionate way you know they have similar desires that's what makes them such a fiery couple because they have similar desires as each other they're very passionate about each other and they never lose attraction for each other but we have the king of wands here a significant leo male coming up here and this is coming up so there might be something you don't know about a leo there might be something you don't know about an aries or a sagittarius or just some kind of now the king of wands doesn't have to be a fire sign it could definitely be a man that you find really attractive okay that's coming in probably at the end of march there is some kind of decision here linked to a fire like individual you know um it could also be um a decision that is linked to expressing something because these are two people that need to express something now both of you might have some kind of pet I do see a little lizard here, and I see a cat. Someone has a cat, and it is a black cat. And I also see a rabbit, so somebody got some pets going on here. You know, um, so very interesting, Taurus. This is you, Taurus, and then this could be a Leo. I do see Taurus and Leo. Um, I do see other fire signs as well. So make it look like the night. So this is about you expressing something after you're you, you're gonna see something and it is gonna feel a bit scary you know this is a decision that you're expressing so very very interesting Taurus let's go ahead and move on we may come back to that message briefly but to me this just looks like something that you don't know about this passion that's coming in all right not sure I think yeah I think this king of wands is definitely linked to this twin because now we have an indication of two people who are mirroring each other all right um let's talk about what's under here yeah again this queen of wands with the death card again all these energies stay the same we this message has and i've shuffled these cards and sometimes messages that are meant to stay stay so again this spark from the past even if it's not the real past you could have known this person in a past life this is the past inner energy past life past energy Okay, maybe from your childhood, something sparking from your childhood. It could definitely be with a Scorpio with fire energy or a Leo. A Leo with fire energy or a Scorpio with fire energy. I'm seeing Leo, Scorpio. Or you're just very passionate about this transformation. This sudden ending and beginning in your love life. But it's linked. Man, it is linked to a spark from the past. Or a very familiar, nostalgic spark. And again, with this decision that you've been waiting to make soulmate energy there's a spark with a soulmate here that may or may not be a scorpio and it's it's like twin flames i feel like soulmate there's a soulmate here there's a spark and it's like i don't know it's like really weird you guys might be transforming a soulmate relationship into a twin flame relationship which might involve leaving a certain i don't know very interesting but this is a very passionate connection these people here they are definitely mirroring each other this is a beautiful connection it's very hot and fiery i will say that and it's going to transform a lot so let's see what this card is okay we have calm within the transformation the, no wonder the death card keeps showing up for you because you guys are going through a transformation whether you're dealing with scorpio or not now you guys are the opposite of scorpio so you have to consider the similarities between you and your opposite sign because you know, transformation is also a big, huge thing for Scor for Taurus, just like money and finances are, is, are a huge thing for Scorpio, even though you guys represent the opposite for each other. But we have this snake here, okay? So there's definitely something here about staying calm within this transformation, okay? This is also about staying calm within this transformation. A lot of transformation energy coming up, lots of Scorpio energy coming up. And this has the number 12, so I don't know if March 12th was important, but Pisces is the 12th house, okay? And Aries is your 12th house. So we've got some spiritual energy coming on here, okay? This is definitely something that's going to transform you because it's an ending and a beginning. That's what the death card talks about is endings and beginnings. And I feel like this has to do with love, so let's read about it. It says, Slithery snakes curl up in the warmth of burning candles. Each candle is a wish made for the future path. Each second of their fire spreads their intentions out into the universe. 
the snakes are getting ready to shed their skin, to completely transform themselves. Now is the time for you as well to move forward with shining intentions. Change can be frightening. This we all know, but you but for now, you can change and be peaceful and calm. You are embracing tra- you are embraced by change. Write down your intentions of what you want for new skin to be. What you want your new skin to be. Gaze into the light and see it before your eyes see it be appear before your eyes so yeah i think this is linked to some kind of new emotion some kind of t- now see when you when you meet up with a twin flame you know your life's never going to be the same to be honest with you meeting a twin flame that's why i really like people to be informed about what everybody wants a twin flame twin flame but it's like dude it's different than soulmates it's it's different now twin flames can be soulmates as well it depends on your specific path but this transformation like when you meet a twin flame they show you parts of yourself that you forgot about so you have no choice but to shed your skin and absolutely start walking your one true path see you don't you know i don't think you necessarily have to be on your path to meet a twin flame because you guys are never separated but you do have to be on your your one true path to bump into soulmates that's the interesting thing and that's just my opinion because i've met a lot of i've met soulmates before only when I'm walking in my truth, only when I'm loving myself, because that's a soul connection. But I, I wasn't necessarily walking my highest path when I um, met my twin flame. When I met my twin flame three years ago, I was ready to start my path. I hadn't yet started the journey, and I think the twin flame is what starts the journey. And that's why sometimes you meet twin flames, and there's karmic lessons, and that's what leads you to meet maybe a soulmate. It depends on what your specific soul requires okay but there is a warmth I'm picking up on here with the king of wands and the queen of wands and those candles burning okay it might help you guys to burn candles in your home maybe burn some candles and in, in to bring in your twin flame but there's a transformation happening here that is it starts with some kind of new emotion it starts with a twin flame connection you guys are there's people here connected at an emotional level which is making me feel like there's a soulmate here present as well. Why is calm within the transformation here for Taurus? Calm within the transformation. Calm within the transformation. We had the Eight of Cups. Um, the Eight of Cups come out, and it did. It did flip back over. So, but I feel like this is definitely something relevant because you're gonna have to walk away from certain things, Taurus. Okay, certain things that you were at once upon a time very emotionally connected. I'm going to keep this card because it, it really does make sense here. Um, this transformation is, is going to be initiated by you once you decide to walk away from what you know no longer serves you emotionally. It could definitely spark on the Libra full moon because I always see this as the full moon. And this is a soul journey, okay? And that's exactly what meeting this new love that is your twin flame. Like, twin flames are absolutely... A journey that you take with another person and it's a soul journey and it, it does make you walk away from certain things that no longer serve you you know it's all about the energy it's all about you know nobody not not many people talk about why twin flames are even a thing and it's because there are these two people that are really just one person in different bodies that absolutely need each other on this journey you know I don't know if this is someone um, that walked away before that's coming back or if this is you Taurus who walked away but to me, this is that soul journey, that, that calm within the transformation. This does give me a very calm energy. You know, maybe you're walking away from something that was emotionally chaotic. This isn't the six of swords, but it does give me that energy that you're walking away from what no longer serves you emotionally, and you're calm about that. That's how you're going to know you're on the right path. After this energy happens, you're going to feel calm, weirdly. And that's a very strong sign that you're on your right path. When you just feel calm, even though you're scared and you're afraid because you don't know what you're walking towards on this soul journey, but you're not alone and you're calm. Libra full moon is something that's very significant here. Maybe even the Pisces new moon or the Aries new moon, but the moon cycle has a lot to do with the coming and going of this energy, the walking away and towards. Soul journey, trans transformation happening, maybe a Scorpio. Um, the Eight of Cups is a Scorpio to me. Maybe it's a Pisces or a Cancer too. But it could also just be you walking away from emotion. You're going to have to leave something behind. 
It's leaving these old, dried-up Ada cups behind in order to walk towards this very new cup of emotion that you're feeling with this twin. There could be someone you meet in March that inspires you to walk away from something. You've been waiting on this for a while, though. You've been waiting to manifest this for a while because it's a wish. It's a wish manifested that you've been that you've invested in. This is something you planted a while ago, Taurus. You know, this is someone who planted certain resources for themselves. You know, whether it was magical or if it was a metaphor. You know, this is about knowing you have enough resources to move forward, because trust in what you planted and trust in your effort, trust in all that has grown so far. You know, you're taking a step back. But something is going to make itself known to you. Could be Virgo, Gemini energy. It's Mercury here too. Communication. But this is a magical wish that you manifested. Maybe it's an Aquarius. Because we do have an Aquarius here. But you absolutely have stood up for this. You know, you're ready to move forward passionately with these messages. So at this point in the reading, you're, you're waiting to see if your effort has paid off. Before you put more energy and effort into a situation. I feel like you have waited here, Taurus. This is that Taurus Virgo Capricorn energy. You've been here long enough, and that's why you're walking away. That's why this pinnacle, this is why the Seven of Pentacles is here with the Eight of Cups. Because this is someone who, who was looking at a, a dry bush, and you're an earth sign. So the earth signs know when something can grow or not. This is like, can this grow? And I feel like the answer is no. Like, you guys might find out that the answer is no. Um, so you start manifesting, you start, you start moving towards a more magical wish of yours. You may, you absolutely have to walk away to start this transformation. So let's move to this last card for you, Taurus. And we have death to the deceitful. So you end March, um, basically everything that is deceitful, anything that's a lie, anything that doesn't resonate is true for you. There's going to be some kind of death now. You have transformation. You had the death card keep showing up. Now you have death to the, to the deceitful. So there's definitely some kind of metaphorical death here going on. Some kind of ending and beginning transformation. Excuse me. Total rebirth. Let's read the death to the, the deceitful card. Um, let's see here. One of the last cards of this book. So yeah, this looks like something is definitely dying, Taurus. Your third eye is open at the end of all this. Um, skeletons getting cleaned out of your closet type of thing. So here it says, we fear death. We fear death of relationships, death of our habits, and our old patterns. But this card is calling upon you to pick up the scythe and cut down those things in your life that, you are, that are not true. Lay your past self to rest. Don't be afraid of burning bridges you never want to cross again. Spread fire to the things that need to be turned to ashes. Cremate the skeletons in your closet. If people think you bring heartless, intense, ruthless... If people think you're being heartless or intense or ruthless, maybe you are, but you need to be. Death will always bring new life, new growth. So tear down walls without a second thought to what will be built in its place. Be relentless in your path to destruction. It is a necessary death. So there's a necessary death here, Taurus, that you cannot avoid. It's interesting it talked about people thinking you're heartless. If anyone calls you heartless this month, you need to remind them, I ate my heart for you. Like, I chose you over my heart repeatedly, and I waited and I waited and I waited. I stayed in this deceitful energy, and it's not my fault that Scorpio is my opposite sign and in that I'm in a relationship with death anyways. There's a very strong relationship um, with death coming up here. It, it might be something that kind of dried up because it wasn't watered, you know what I mean? It, it didn't give you what you wanted out of it. Maybe. It could just be something that you're waiting on, okay? Waiting on magic to happen with this wish. Death to the deceitful. Why is death to the deceitful here for Taurus for March 2019? We have the Ten of Pentacles coming out. So for some of you guys, this is a false foundation. It's a chaotic family situation where there's all these people... Um, it's something that you thought would be around, you know, for the next 10 years. It, it's something that you thought, maybe it's a career. Maybe some of you guys are working in places that just don't resonate with you. Maybe it's a deceitful money situation, a deceitful, it's ending though. This is an ending. This is a completion. The Ten of Pentacles is absolutely a completion. So there's some kind of home environment, family situation, money inheritance, money payout, some kind of stability situation. This is a commitment. So there's something that just wasn't going to work out in the long run, Taurus. And maybe you knew that. 
you know, you couldn't continue to stay here and eat your own heart and feelings. So this situation is being killed for you. I know it seems scary because it's going to cost you a home environment. It's going to cost you something that was really secure. But, you know, Taurus, you know, it, this isn't all that matters in life. Love matters too. The way you feel matters. Your heart definitely matters. So by the end of March, there might be some kind of deceitful situation that ends that looks kind of like this family situation, relationship. Remember, you know, be relentless in your path of destruction. You know, you did have the tower a little bit here um, a little while ago. This is going to be scary for Taurus a little bit. But please remember that you don't absolutely have to know what's going to be built in place of this. How do you know that there won't be castles built in the place of this mansion? You know, you might be destroying a mansion, but you're going to receive castles for that mansion. You know what I mean? Something bigger and better is what I mean. Because we have the four of wands. Okay, this is about some kind of marriage. It's a, Maybe it's a deceitful marriage. Maybe you're finally filing for a divorce because you know it's not going to work out. This is about where do you see yourself over the next 10 years, Taurus? You know, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Do you see yourself with this person married with kids? Do you see yourself living in, the, in this? You know what I'm saying? Just know that this is a necessary death. Whatever is dying in the end of March, it's very necessary. You know, it's spring. Spring is a time of rebirth. So you got to let it die. Winter winter was all about death. You know what I mean? Everything died. And now, you know, everything's going to be living again. We do have the Empress here. Okay, so this is definitely a situation with someone's mom. A situation, uh, somebody's mother-in-law is up in this reading. Because I'm seeing marriage and mom. Marriage and mom. Like... Somebody lives together with their mom or something, or somebody, somebody, there's just something going on here in a tight family situation, and if it's deceitful, it's going to be dead, okay? It has to do with beauty, it has to do with, this is a Taurus woman, a Libra woman, um, an Aries woman, it's a pregnancy, someone wants to be pregnant in the next 10 years and married, but they can't do that on a false foundation, so there's a false foundation that, this is so relevant. Death to the deceitful. That's a tower energy. I would go ahead and say that this is the tower in this deck. So remember, whatever crumbles down, don't be worried about what's going to be rebuilt. Because it absolutely will, Taurus. I promise you that. This is Uranus. Uranus is coming in to shock you. So there might be a situation that falls apart with a pregnancy or a marriage or someone's mom or something like that. But it's absolutely your stability. Like, I think your stability, where you live this month, it might be changing, you know, like some place where some kind of marriage or place that you thought would be stable forever, it's crumbling down. But with the card that's coming out next after that, absolutely beautiful. You know, you got to let this false foundation fall down. You were living somewhere, Taurus, for a while that that was not, it wasn't suiting you. You know, this is that Uranus energy making making it feel, look at that electricity. This is Uranus. Uranus is electricity. This is Mars energy. This is the card that rules Mars, and Mars is in Taurus right now. So that Mars energy really did compel you to action, to let something false crumble and die so that you can embrace this. I would rather live in the Ten of Cups than this tower. This is living in a storm that's always falling apart, constant state of falling apart and crumbling because it's a false foundation. I don't care if the tower is disguised as this or not. This looks beautiful. But the marriage or the foundation, it was the tower at the end of the day. So it needed to fall apart so that you could embrace this Ten of Cups. Beautiful, happy blessings, okay? And it may or may not be with a Pisces. Goodness gracious, are you dealing with a soulmate or a twin flame Taurus? That is the question that remains to be unanswered because we have the moon here. Yes, it's a Pisces, maybe it's a Cancer. This is certain fears, you know, you may be afraid, you may be afraid of this transition here. Definitely linked to Pisces season. Definitely link, linked to the new moon. Okay, this is something you're afraid of. The moon is afraid. This is the unknown, you know, that, that make it look like the night. What is hidden will be revealed. We have another blue moon, blue moon. You know, this is a walking away, man. Some kind of completed cycle. You're afraid of it could have to do with the Pisces. But the reason why I'm saying are you dealing with a soulmate or, or a lover, like, goodness gracious. These two people are connected at a soul level. Gemini, someone here has a Gemini moon. We've got a Pisces and a Gemini here. So maybe it's a Pisces with Gemini energy. Maybe it's a Gemini with Pisces energy for some of you. Some of you have a Gemini moon. 
um other than that the moon this like you you could actually be afraid of what you're not able to see in this relationship there is a lot of fears your shadow side is coming up here you know illusions and stuff like that um you guys were in a long distance relationship you guys were connected at the soul but there was some kind of de there's a, de a decision here now this is a secret lover energy as well the moon is secrets the lover is a connection so there's a secret connection here but there's also an emotional connection but the moon is a soul when i see the moon and the lovers this reminds me of a soulmate but this is that twin energy so some of you guys are dealing with a soulmate twin flame it's really 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 intense it's it showed up this whole reading um and it doesn't matter whether it's your soulmate or your twin flame they're gonna reflect they they this person in march is a reflection of your soul it's absolutely a spark coming back from the past okay so prepare to feel passion from someone you have a familiar connection with taurus but this is linked to it's all up to you you know the very beginning of your reading is the two of swords so there is something here about a decision spark from the past secret lover lovers connected at a soul level it could be a pisces lover or a gemini lover letting this false foundation fall apart so you can get the ten of cups the empress the four of wands and then that ten of pentacles so we have one more card to clarify actually that was the clarification i feel i feel that um death to the deceitful what card came out for that um i feel like it was the ten of pentacles wasn't it and then the bottom of the deck gosh i can't remember maybe it was the empress let's just clarify that again together but i i feel like it's that ten of pentacles and that four of wands that empress but i need to get an underlying energy for you so show me death to the deceitful one more time for taurus death to the deceitful it's that it was definitely that four of pentacles energy so you guys know what this is right it's jobs it's home environments it's marriages that are just not true for you anymore so you're by the end of march you're not gonna be there you know yeah bottom of the deck is the ace of swords now and we have the justice card the four of cups and the six of swords so this is about receiving justice it might even involve the law it might involve the libra full moon i feel like by the libra full moon you have walked away from something all right but you are feeling a bit afraid to uh, to you are secretly afraid to say yes to this cup okay and you are definitely traveling taurus you know you're leaving something behind you're really sad about leaving this whatever this person place or thing is that is considered deceitful you're you're sad for leaving that behind but you know it's a better place for you emotionally it's more truthful it's more clear you in the know on on the truth but you know there is fear that the light will bring judgment some of you guys are afraid to step in your truth because you're afraid that you'll be judged for this new version of yourself. But you absolutely have to speak this truth, okay? There's a new beginning here for you, Taurus. So I forgot to do this for Aries, but I am using pyrite this month because it's fool's gold and, you know, the whole St. Patrick's Day thing. So I really want to place this on the Ace of Cups for you, Taurus, and let that sit there for a little bit before I start my Gemini reading. So that you can just be showered in gold, you know, so that this twin flame connection can absolutely manifest for you this month, even if it means walking away to transform. I do see with these two cards here, end of March, traveling, walking away, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, and it's more truthful, okay? Don't be afraid of judgment. Thank you so much for listening, Taurus. This is a little bit of a longer reading, but your reading was jam-packed, filled with all this twin flame stuff, so it took a little bit to you know kind of explain everything there but hopefully this resonates with you guys if it does and you would like a personal reading please email me and so we can talk about that i would love to give you guys some personal readings because this is just a general reading for all taurus but i can look into your your specific energy other than that you guys um the next time i'll be uploading will probably be around the libra full moon which is apparently important for you because you have the justice card here okay so that libra full moon at the end of the month is what's going to spark you guys to walk away in in your truth okay so thank you so much guys and i'll talk to you closer to the end of march bye